Hello, I'm Pastor Keith Mazingo of Metropolitan Community Church of Baton Rouge. I want to thank you for clicking on the video of our worship message. Please go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mccbr to see the entire worship service, including prayers, special music, and communion. You're also welcome to join us every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. for worship service. Stay tuned after the message for information on how you can stay in touch with us. I know it seems like trouble comes when you... Um, Dennis is going to be, we think maybe May, the first Sunday of May, back here for our potluck Sunday. And while we're, we'll get our food and go in to the social hall and start to eat. And he is going to do a presentation with PowerPoint and all sorts of stuff while we're doing that. He has written two books. The first book was Mademoiselle Gigi, and the second book is Madame Gigi, and it's the story of the French Jewish who survived the Holocaust and later in life had the first gay bar in Lafayette Amen. in the 60s and 70s. <laughs> and what a treat for us to be able to get some of the inside scoop from the actual author of these books. So we want to thank him for being willing to come and share all of that with us. And maybe we'll have some, will you have some books for us? Yes. You'll have some books we can even buy and get signed by the author that day. So that's very exciting. Thank you, Dennis, for reading for us today. I wanted people to know who he was. And he, I said, would you read today? And he was like, yeah, you're the author, why not? And then people get to know who he is a little bit. So join us for that. We have a little ways to go, but don't worry, we'll keep it out. In today's reading, we have the traditional Palm Sunday reading. And Kelly just went over a little bit more of it in detail with the children and a little bit of the meaning behind it. We know that Jesus got ushered into the city on a donkey and ball. That may seem a little strange to some of us. We would, you know, have limos and all sorts of things these days, but they used what they had back then. And this was a sign of royalty. When Jesus was ushered into the city and all of the people came out with the palm leaves, thank you, Kathy, for making that happen. Thank you, Robin, for making that happen. And the ones up at front and back, because a lot of the palms are dead this time after the last read. So we're glad we found some. Thank you all for making that happen. But it was a symbol of royalty, and people were coming out and waving these palm leaves and throwing their coats down for the, for the reverence of this Jesus who the religious community, at least his followers in the religious community, not all of the religious community, but his followers wanted to see him crowned king, literally king, not just spiritual king, but political king. And that was, that trip into Jerusalem that day had a lot of symbolism with it. But after all of these years later, 2,000 years later, here we still come to re recognize that day as the ushering in. Jesus going into Jerusalem is the ushering in of Holy Week. And we know this week, from now until next Sunday morning, we call Holy Week. And we know that it's the final week of Jesus' life, and we travel with Jesus each day through that last bit of his life. And we call, we will start on, um, on Friday night, come together again for our Good Friday service, where we'll have readings and music and a time of prayer around the altar and across to to and light candles and whatever makes you feel comfortable in a way that makes you feel comfortable and connected to God in that time of trauma. But it doesn't end there because we know that next Sunday we come back not for the death that we talk about on Friday night, but the resurrection. Amen. The real life, the raising up of our Savior next Sunday. The part of that story that um, we've been studying the African Part of Ubuntu, this notion of finding God in one another and Amen. sensing God in each other. Yes. In the way we look and the way we act and the, word, 
words we use and the things that we find valuable in our life, the things we value, the things we're willing to put our money to and the willing the things we're willing to put our time to, the things we're willing to go march about or, or purposely not. But what always speaks to me, I don't care how many sermons I preach about this this Sunday on Palm Sunday, what always gets to me is that Jesus asked his disciples to go find this little donkey. And what struck me a little different this year, because you know I'm always looking for something new, in the Ubuntu notion is that we find something new and we dig a little deeper than we've dug before. And this notion came to me that Jesus asked for a specific donkey. Now there are donkeys, there were donkeys everywhere. But Jesus went into detail about this particular donkey. He knew all the details. He knew what the donkey looked like. So he could describe it to the disciples. He knew exactly where this donkey would be at this particular time. Do people know where you are at a particular time? <laughs> a lot of us work on clockwork. You can kind of know. Some of us don't. This specific, Jesus was so specific about, I mean, this one. And it's a specific one. He didn't want any other one. He told the disciples, here's what this donkey looks like. Here's where you will find it. And he probably guessed that there were going to be people that came along and said, well, why are you taking that donkey? You don't own that donkey. Why are you taking that donkey? And Jesus said, just simply tell them the Lord has need of it. And that's my favorite part of the whole story. That Jesus knew very specifically which one he needed. There were other donkeys. All, a lot of other donkeys could have worked, could have done the work. They were strong enough to do the work. There were other ones that were probably exactly the same color. There were other ones that could have carried him along the way and enjoyed the party, as Kelly talked about, the parade. There were other ones just as qualified, but Jesus that day, for that moment, wanted that donkey and no other one. Does that strike you as interesting? It does to me. I love it. He had a purpose, and he needed that one for that day. Now, on an individual level, as a pastor, I can identify with that. Because there are times I need something, and I know that there are 14 of you that are qualified to do what I need done that day. But I also, especially when you've been here as long as I have, I also know some of your temperaments. <laughs> I also know some of your gifts of generosity or not. <laughs> when I say that, I'm not talking about your money, I'm talking about your time. I know some of your limitations. You know, if I want somebody to haul something with me, I don't call Zell, right? <laughs> She has a willing heart to do it, but her body says no to that. And that's okay. Because there are other things she can do today, you see. Recently, uh, Reverend Wanda Floyd contacted me. She's over our emerging ministries in uh, Metropolitan Community Church. And she said, I need some information about emerging churches. And I need some testimonies from people who have had a successful emerging church contract. So I understand that you work with Hattiesburg, Mississippi to get that church. You and Reverend Brenlin here and your congregation, her congregation. I said, she said, I'll send you some questions. They were real simple questions, five little questions. And she said, I, I want to be able to promote this concept that other churches can do what your church is. Amen. And since yours was so successful, I said, well, guess what? I can do you one better than that. I can not only answer your five questions, 
we'll not only just talk about it, we'll video it. Because I know somebody that can make, that's very professional, can make this television worthy. Can make this Oscar worthy. Because I know David Nall, who does our technical stuff here on Sundays, I know his temperament. I know his willingness to give of his time and his talents. I know there are times he loses sleep, especially on Saturday night, waiting for me to send him last <laughs> information or some change from earlier in the week. It's like, you know, I've been working on this sermon and I need this change because I'm going in a different direction than the information I sent you earlier. And he just does it. Lord, he just does it. With a smile. And I always tell him, you know, you can tell me no, and if you tell me no, it's okay. Because I've been to other churches where they said, no, we can't do that. <laughs> you know, it's in place. We have our PowerPoint ready. So if you veer off course, well, that's just on you. Our PowerPoint is ready. <laughs> now, part of that may have been their temperament, but part of, part of it was probably their qualifications and their ability to go in and in the last minute. David has changed things while we were speaking it on the bowl, on the floor and put it up on the screen. Amen. He has qualifications that a lot of people just don't have. So when I called him, I said, David, would you do something with me? Because I volunteered us to do this, and if you don't want to do it, it's okay. I'll just let her know because that's not what she asked of us. Not only did he say, I'll do it, I will take time, let's go to Hattiesburg and meet with Reverend Brandlin there, Amen. so I can videotape there, and we can do all of this, and, and, and he, he didn't just say, yes, I'm willing to do that. He was excited about it, and I knew him well enough to know he would be excited about it, and when you're excited about what God has gifted you to do, what you're going to do, you're going to share it. Amen. Because you get joy and it brings other people joy. Amen. Yeah. I had the 411 on David. I knew he would do the best job of any person that I know on earth. And he did, by the way. You'll be seeing that soon, too. Well, God does that to us. Yes. God does that to us. God gifts each one, each one of us with something. Yes. Some of you have more gifts than I can shake a stick at, and I'm envious. <laughs> I do. I, I really am. There are some people that can do so many different things and do them well. I can do a lot of different things, but I can't do a lot of different things well. I can get you through it. There's no, <clears throat> that doesn't mean there aren't things I can do well. Now, Let's go back to that humility, timidity thing that he was reading about a while ago. Was yes. There's a line between having confidence in what you've been gifted to do and knowing you do this well and being able to offer that and being egotistical and thinking you have a monopoly on it. Absolutely. There's a big difference there. There's a difference in attitude. There's a difference, because you can be extremely gifted and be extremely humble about it. And still have confidence to know that if you do it, you'll do it better than probably anybody else in the room. Because that's your gift. That's your gift. And here's the thing. I want to encourage each of us to recognize the gifts that God has put in each of us. And to be willing to say, you know, I not only have this gift, I'm willing to take this gift and exercise this gift and make it even stronger than it was. And have an attitude of willingness so that it's not dread to have to use it but it brings us joy because we know it brings someone else joy. I'll give you another example of that. I think most everybody in the room 
<clears throat> if you've been around for a while, you know Mark LaFoe, who is a member of our community. He's a, um, uh, an interior designer here in town. Works at one of the higher-end stores. And he's an interior designer, so he meets people all over the place. He's been doing this for about, what, 20 years or so. And this week on Facebook, he said something, and I just started laughing. He said, you know, I am an interior designer. I have been doing this for years and years. And if I give you advice for your interior design, trust me, it is correct. He said, and then he went, because I got tickled because I already knew this reading was coming. And I thought, hmm, now where's this going? Where's this going? Where's this going? Because at that moment, it could have slipped into ego instead of confidence. Well, in typical Mark LaFoe pa- uh, uh, fashion, he said, I know what I'm gifted with. In life. I don't want you to take that as I know better and there's nobody else. He knew how to celebrate and he even said, I celebrate other designers Amen. and their abilities. See, if, if the ego just went right on out the door. Instead, it was a confidence and I thought, he's doing the Ubuntu and he doesn't even know it. <laughs> I've got to educate him on the Ubuntu concept this week. Amen. And he said, I celebrate it, but if somebody comes in and says, I give them this, they give me all the information what they want, and I give them this, and then they say, well, let me take this, because I have a friend that's really good with colors. And he said, trust me, if I give you this package, that's the package you need to stay with. See, he had confidence. In his gift, he's steady in what he knows he's good at. And he doesn't come over here and try to tell somebody else how to do theirs. Or even that theirs is bad. He will celebrate whatever makes you happy. But if you ask for his professional advice, then expect to get it. And expect that it will be right. And I just loved that, and I thought, boy, he doesn't know. He just played right into my sermon for this Sunday. (laughs) So I want to ask you something. Do you know what your gifts are? Some of you do, and I guarantee you, most of you do. Some of you won't admit it because you're too shy or you don't have enough confidence. And I want to warn you not to go overboard and become egotistical, but I want you to have an humble confidence in those gifts. Otherwise, if you just remember that little song about hiding it under a bushel. If we just hide our little light under a bushel, nobody's going to see it. Nobody else gets to enjoy it. How selfish of us to not get past right for the moment. Let me ask you another question. Do you know what your gifts aren't? Because that is equally important. It is equally important to know what you're really not so good at, even if you want to be. And if you say, well, I'm not really sure, but you know, my close friends tell me I'm good at this. Well, then maybe you need to ask some people that are not so close and see. But it needs to be somebody you trust, their opinion, and ask. And I ask him, could I tell this on him? I was talking to Brother Jason this week. And he's, I, uh, I was telling him about this sermon and some of the examples. And I said, you know, you, you know what your gifts are and you know what your gifts aren't? And he said, well can't sing. I said, well, how do you know that? He said, well, because at one point in my life, I really wanted to be a good singer. And I wanted 
to perform. I said, well then, what happened? Why aren't you out performing somewhere? He said, because I didn't make the choir when I auditioned. I said, well, was it just that day where you're just, you know, you're having an off day because everybody has an off day on occasion? He said, no, they told me I wasn't good. (laughs) I said, and yet I look at you now years later and you're not horribly scarred from that because you are very successful with the gifts you are using. And he said, yeah, I am. So I want you to know what your gifts are and be confident in that, but also know what your gifts aren't. And if you don't know what they are and aren't, aren't, ask someone. Here's the deal. This point I'm making, I've so far been talking about individuals, but we as a church, we as a community, also have gifts to offer. We as a church have gifts to offer other groups in our community, in the city of Baton Rouge, and even to other churches, whether it be Hattiesburg or the next church that we get that may be on the other side of the earth, that we help emerge from a small group into an actual church. Amen. I want to read to you the prayer of reflection that they sent with this reading because it touched me especially at the end because this speaks to all of us it's not just individuals it's us as a group today's question is why are you untying the donkey and in a global village understanding of the question we can raise several questions why are you accepting outsiders why are you including foreigners Why are you reaching out to the sinners? Why are you advocating for same-sex rights? Why are you including women? Why are you legitimizing the children born out of wedlock? If I had written this, I would have put in one from yesterday right here now. Why are you marching against gun violence in schools? Jesus, in anticipation to the question, gave the answer, say, the Lord needs it. Yes. Oh, that'll preach. Why are we doing the things that we do? Why do we do these things? Because the Lord needs it. When Jesus was sending out his disciples in the Great Commission, he said, Go you into all the world and make disciples of all nations. This commission embraces all people of God. Now listen to this last line. I'm going to just this, this next to the last line because I kept coming back. I kept rereading it. I kept rereading it. And the more I read it, the more Pentecostal I got. <laughs> the more the Spirit just kept moving and moving and moving, yeah. stirring something up inside of me. You don't have to defend your inclusive ministry in any other way. Just say, the Lord needs them. Yes. 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 It really comes down to that. How many times have I gone to my family members when they complained? Even one of my favorite people in the whole world who loves me dearly and constantly is in touch with me. Got really offended at something I said this week because I stuck up for people that were Muslim. And that person said, why do you have to take something so simple and make it so complex? Why can't you just let it be what it is and enjoy it? Why do you have to politicize everything? Maybe you should be a politician instead of a pastor. And that was okay, because that person may be watching today, and I want that person to know that's okay that you feel that way. Or you can be both. (laughs) Because
because my response before I got that response was when I when I see that display in a store that has three crosses made out of Mountain Dew bottles, by the way. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. So religious. <laughs> We're in a public store, and they have the Pepsi display up, and they have the three crosses in Mountain Dew. Yep. And I first made a joke out of it, because y'all know I love me some Mountain Dew. <laughs> never far from a Mountain Dew. There are plenty in my office right in the next one. I'm, just, I'm never far from a Mountain Dew. They're in my truck, they're in my house, they're at my job, wherever I am, they're close. I'm close to a Mountain and I made a joke out of it at first. But my point was to show the absurdity of it. Yes. Really, it was. And I know it was. And that person knew it was. Because they know me very well. And I said, so I'm taking what you're saying here with this display is that Mountain Dew killed Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> And so, <laughs> and so, I want you to know that if it kills me too, I mean, yeah. good company. Yeah. <laughs> and y'all know I can have these sharp with it and sharp with it. I, I was just being silly. Amen. And I don't have anything against these people having their display. Don't get me wrong. They won't have their display. That's fine. They can have their display. But I pointed out that I know people. I know people, and you probably know people, that if that same store had the same Pepsi display in the shape of the star in the crescent for a Muslim holiday, some of the same people that are posting this picture would be out with signs in front of that store telling people to boycott it. Yeah. And so my, and I said that, I said that as my explanation, and I said, I went a step further. I said, you know, that do unto others as you would have them do unto you really does mean something to me. Yes. 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 And I know that that person took offense at it, and I wasn't trying to offend that person. I was trying to lift that person out of that mentality. Amen. Because in my world, of being inclusive. I may think that I have the truth and the only truth and nothing but the truth, and I can go right on to glory believing that. But there are people sitting a few blocks away today in their worship center that way, and another folk, a group of folks sitting yesterday in their synagogue just a few blocks that way with their truth. They're respecting my truth, and I need to respect their truth. Amen. 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 I need to honor them as people of God. Yes. And I want to say one other thing, just so you know where I'm coming from, because you know how I am. I always have to take it one more step, and that gets me in trouble sometimes. <laughs> but I said recently to someone who called me out to change. I've told y'all this, that wanted me to reevaluate my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And I had to say to that person, I'm not sure you have very much trust, much trust in the God that you serve. And let me tell you why. Because if you really, really, really trusted in the Holy Spirit that is that I believe is alive and well. And circulating all around us every day in the very air that we breathe that lives Amen. in our spirit. Amen. If I really believe that, we live in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. And there are other religions that believe that too, by the way. That we live, they may have a different name for it, but they know, I know what they're talking about when they start talking and describing. I'm like, oh, I don't know what that is. That's Holy Spirit in my language. And Holy Spirit, if you really believe that the Holy Spirit is alive and well and that God is all-powerful, don't you think that God can reach me personally, one-on-one, -on -one, and notify me? And 
if you're looking at my life, while I have confidence, it's, a, it's an humble confidence, not an ego confidence. Amen. I am willing to change my mind about anything that the Holy Spirit prompts me to. I got to this reading <coughs> when I saw that last bit. I'll read it to you again because I had to read it 14 times at my house. <laughs> when Jesus was sending out his disciples in the Great Commission, he said, Go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. This commission embraces all people. Yes. That's yes. right. You don't have to defend your inclusive ministry in any other way. Just say, the, the Lord, Lord has need of it. <laughs> the Lord has need of us. And just as Kelly told the children, you go out and be that like, you know what? I love what she said. I know that this happens during the week because I can see it in your faces and in your spirit. I can read it. I can read it when you come in here. You can read when people are letting the Holy Spirit just radiate through them. Hmm. The Lord has need of it. Let me just say this. And I'll be Thanks. God has need Yes. Yes. Each one of us. Yes. Maybe I'm the donkey that God is picking for this day to do this task that Zell can do equally as well. And maybe tomorrow God picks Zell to do that task. Because it's her moment. It's God's time for her. God knows what we need just as much as we think we know we Yes. something in our lives. Yeah. No one can do you like you. Amen. Yeah. You are called to be you for this moment in this time. I've not promised to make it out of this church building today. So I better be doing in this moment what God has God's will for me in this tell you, leave you with this message, whatever your ministry, whatever your gifts, be willing to share them, yes. because God has need of it. Yes. 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 Again, thank you for watching our worship message video on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notified of other video posts. You can also watch our worship service in its entirety by going to facebook.com slash mccbr. You can watch us live on Facebook at 11 a.m. Central every Sunday. Visit our webpage at mccbr. Dot org, where you can find our calendar of events as well as other information about our church and our denomination. Like our Facebook page so you can be notified of our other live events. Thank you again and may you have a blessed week. Whether here and now or another time, not even height or depth, whether strong or weak, in the face of the future, all the powers that be, you are not separated.